in, in the premium end anyway, it's probably the uh, the amount of spend on on the premium end. So it, for just single cast, for instance, is that sort of a generally our most expensive release, the limited. So single cast, there may be 250, 300 bottles in a single cast. Generally, the most expensive release we do, and, and we by far and away sell the most single casts in Asia, and, and China is, is a big part of that. Um, because at the high end, people are willing to spend a lot of money in China if they, you know, if, you, if they like uh, a whiskey as an individual. Sometimes they're buying, you know, three, four, five, six, ten cases of it, and it's because they like that. They know they like the brand, whatever they'll buy it in, and it's it's you again touched on the gifting culture earlier. They want to use that for gifts or for their friends or for whatever else it might be. Whereas in Europe um, and America, more developed markets. The single cast is still popular, but they'll buy one bottle because they like it uh, and they'll drink that and then they'll stick to their main brand, you know, that's, that's below that somewhere. Um, and that's the thing. The biggest difference is, is where they like a whiskey and it's expensive. They don't mind buying the, the whole cask, let alone one bottle. I think the, the, the gifting culture is an interesting one because it, I mean, there's undoubtedly it's present, but it's a bit of a kind of a gray area, especially within kind of corporate environment and, and what you can and can't gift within, within state policy. But I do think for brands, it's about adopting the right approach um, because there's no doubt about it. There's, there's an opportunity to take advantage of there. It's just delivering the right message to make sure that you fall in line with, with policy. And as, as you said, you've managed to do that through through your partners, and maybe some of it has been private, some of it may have been corporate, but been very successful in doing so. Yeah, and and it's um, it is an interesting one because again, just the branding and the gifting culture is, uh, you know, how many dates there are on a Chinese calendar that uh, that are <laughs> gifting or are celebrated or whatever, and and you certainly want to take advantage of that as a brand, and we do a little bit of that in terms of you know gifting or or, or labeling that you know, indicates that that's for a special occasion. But uh, again, it's something to be careful of where you suddenly have a new release for every single gifting or event. You suddenly, it's, it's not no longer about the whiskey or the story or the brand. It's about uh, this label has something on that is Chinese or is for a festival, I'll buy it. But there's no understanding of the brand or it's not, again, a, a long-term thing. You'll sell a few thousand bottles for a certain event, but are they whiskey fans? Are they going to repeat purchase? Are they going to tell people about your brand and how good it is in the story? Probably not. Yeah. It's again, it's, I think it's, it's all balance and, and consistency, yeah. as you said, in, in your messaging to keep the kind of long term sustainable growth of the brand there, but also making sure you do capitalize on, I don't know if you can call them quick wins, but definitely the important yeah. calendar dates that can be commercially beneficial. Exactly. And we've got one coming up, I think I mentioned where we're bottling on a certain date, a certain cast, just because that is an important date in the Chinese calendar. So we're certainly doing it, but it's just probably yeah, working out how you do it that, um, mm -hmm. that can still keep in with your brand. Yeah, I, I think um, in a broad sense, they, they do, as I said, Scotch whiskey is so interesting in Scotland that they understand sort of, you know, on, on a broad reach smoky whiskey and unpeated and and a little bit about different regions isla is such a big brand that some you know often maybe they've heard of isla but i think there's a, a split almost in the chinese market where you know the older generation who drink scotch whiskey tend to be more uh drinking the whiskies because there was a big promotion or the mccallan they know well or it's the big brands and they are you know it was used to be drunk at business meetings or whatever and it was a bit of a show-off product to drink scotch whiskey so there wasn't necessarily a deep understanding of it but the younger generation do seem to have a, a much more in-depth understanding. It's still not, you know, when you go to Germany and you get asked about yeah. the uh, cut points and the size and shape of your still and the fermentation time, it's still not quite that level. It's still more of a basic understanding of region, style, uh, cast type, that sort of thing. But I think the younger generation is certainly driving um, the knowledge of, of Scotch whiskey and the culture of, of Scotland because they, whenever I go there, they've all got, these VPN things that bypass any yeah. fans when any, then they can access <laughs> Facebook and social media and websites that, and a lot of them also seem to speak uh, English more so than the older generation. So they can read, even if it's in English, you know, about the brand or articles and things like that. So mm -hmm. I'd say definitely there's a, almost a split where the older generation, the older Scotch whiskey drinkers, maybe not so much, but the younger ones certainly coming through with more depth. Um, yeah. But there's a long way to go to reach a, I said a sort of tasting in Germany where you've got to know your technical percentages and details for any questions that might come up.
it, where we are, it's probably the stage, the next step for us is it, it's easy for us to communicate and, and have whiskey tastings and people who are really interested in whiskey, um, that connoisseur, I guess, sort of market where they want to know all about it. So it's not so important whether it's non-age statement or it's particularly old or, or how many awards it's won, that sort of thing. But if you want to get into the next step, then, then you suddenly there's a bit of a barrier in China where still there is a, a large part of the market where they do want to have something that is old because there is that gifting culture again, where if you've got a gift, if it says a number of 15 or 18 or 21, <laughs> it's very easy to know, or well, that probably costs a bit more. That's a special whiskey. So there is uh, again, a bit of a, a barrier at some level in the market where certainly age statement or uh, single cask has a, um, a real sort of importance. But I think the lower end or the smaller end of the market where the connoisseurs are in China, that's definitely growing, but it still is a small, small part of the market. You know, uh, it, it's not a massive connoisseur single malt market still in China. There's so much room to grow, which is the exciting part of it. But still that, that real connoisseur market is, is a small part. So, um, you know, we've grown really quickly at the moment. Um, when we will hit that barrier where we may need an age statement, we're not sure yet, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you.